All right. Hello, everybody. My name is The Last Hat... Uh, let me start that again. It's The Last Hodler here, and as you probably know from my previous videos, I am one of the lead blockchain developers um, for a blockchain company in the UK, and they're called Online Blockchain. And I want to talk to you today about something that I find absolutely terrifying, being a software developer within the blockchain space, um, because it's going to be a security issue that we're talking about today. Um, and it's something that could very easily be overlooked by a novice who is trying to implement a secure system. It's something that if you're um, new to security focused development, it's definitely something that you might um, overlook. So it's going to be something that you really want to know if you're a software developer, but also just in general, if you're going to be using exchanges, um, it's definitely something that that is going to make you a little bit more savvy and, and possibly um, give you a bit of insight into how the security works, um, at least on a, on a high level, um, in these exchanges. Okay, so uh, we're looking at an exchange today called BitGrail. Now, BitGrail is an Italian exchange, and they're actually still going today, um, but less than a year ago, they suffered a tragic hack, okay? And they lost something in the order of $170 million worth of crypto because of this hack. And actually, it took them um, months, according to a press release um, that I'll link in the description, it actually took them months to um, kind of alert their community and report this issue. Some people think it's because um, they tried to fix the issue themselves and cover it up, um, but other people think that the hack uh, took place and it actually took months for the exchange to even realize um, that this hack took place, and that's um, my personal opinion. Um, you should never uh, misinterpret malice misinterpret something incredibly stupid for something incredibly malicious, okay? So um, you can bet when big security hacks like this um, happen, it's generally due to um, bad coding practice, you know, a vulnerability that's left in the code that might have been overlooked, but it's generally not something that the developers uh, maliciously put there um, so that they could steal uh, cryptocurrency or steal something or have a, a, some kind of vulnerability for themselves to use. Okay, so let me explain exactly what happened with this exchange and how the hack occurred, but also like a remedy for any program out there that wants to avoid this issue, um, because it's actually quite a trivial issue um, once you know exactly how it works. Okay, so in computing and in the internet, generally speaking, we have something called the client-server model. Okay, now what the client-server model is, is you have the client, okay, and that's somebody who might be requesting some kind of service or data, and then you have the server, that basically does what the client wants. So it gives it the data it wants or it performs the service that it wants. All right. So the, the client will, will ask the server for something and the server will do it. All right. So in the context of security, the client might post their password to the server and the server would say, is that your password? Let me check. And then it checks the database to see if the password is correct and says, oh, yes, it's correct. You now have access. Okay. That would be a client server uh, paradigm, if you will. Okay, but the problem with BitGrail and what they implemented is they did the all of the verification would occur on the client side, and the server side um, would not have to deal with any password um, verification in of itself. So let me explain in more detail exactly how that might work. So what um, BitGrail may have done would be send all of the code that deals with the verification to the client for the client to do the verification of their own password. Okay, and then as a response to all of that, um, all of that code and all of the execution, the, um, the client would send back a, okay, the password was correct. All right, because the code would say, check the password, if it's correct, tell the server that it's all fine, and then the server will give the client access to do what they want. But there's a problem with that, um, that paradigm. There's a problem with the way of doing it all on just the client side is that the client could just lie and say the verification was successful and the server side wouldn't know whether it was um, successful at all because they're trusting the client side to perform all of the verification. It's like me saying to you, um, I have some I have some secret information and I can only give you the secret information if you prove um, that you know the password. But I'm going to leave the proving of, of the password to yourself. If you tell me that you've proved that you have the password to yourself, then I'll give you access. You can see how that's a screwed up model and that doesn't work. But that's exactly what BitGrail implemented um, onto their exchange. So as you've probably guessed by now, the remedy to this would be to do all of the password verification on the server side, okay? If, I, if, if the client gives the server a password that is not correct, then the server will know for itself that the password wasn't correct and it won't give access to the client, it won't do what the client wants. 
Okay, it won't do the um, the execution that the client would require to have a password for it to do, like log into the account, for example. So that's actually one of two hacks that's happened um, to BitGrail. Now the other hack that occurred to to, uh, to BitGrail was an exploit in the way that you would request some coins from an account. Okay, so in a normal exchange, you would have an account, and let's say on this account you have three Bitcoin. Okay, you would send a request to that exchange if you want to take the Bitcoin out. You would say, "Can I please take out three Bitcoin?" And then on the server side, this um, they would say, "Okay, does this account have three Bitcoin in it?" And if it did, then they would um, approve the request, and the uh, client would be able to retrieve their three Bitcoin. But say the client requested three Bitcoin, but there was only two Bitcoin within the account, then the server side would do the compu computation. It would say, "Do they have more?" Bitcoin than they're more or equal amounts of Bitcoin than they're requesting. And if the answer was no, then they would just refuse to send the Bitcoin. But with BitGrail, the problem was that you could request coins out of out of an account, out of someone else's account, right? And then it would just take those coins and not check whether the balance of that account um, had emptied. It wouldn't even check if it wouldn't check if the account had the funds to give to you. So you are able to make an arbitrary account have a negative balance and take that crypto out of the account. So those are two ways um, and a remedy for one that um, exchanges have been hacked in the past, namely BitGrail. But good on them for still going. They're, they're, you can still make an account on BitGrail and trade your cryptocurrency, and that's up to you. That's not financial advice. Um, but there are a lot of exchanges out there that have been hacked, and I'm sure there are plenty to come that will be hacked in the future. Because with anything new, any brand new technology like this cryptocurrency technology, there's always a rush um, to create applications as fast as, as possible to have that competitive edge. And that, that's one of two problems that arise. The other problem being that when, is, when there's a new technology, there's never a clear pathway, there's never a road most traveled that you can go down and be sure that you have all of your security paradigms set up, right? There's always, um, there's always known unknowns and there's always unknown unknowns where you don't even know that there's information that you should know. You know, there's, there's, there's things that you know that you should know, but there are things you don't even know that you should know when the, when the um, technology is, is so new. So as um, the timeline uh, proceeds forward and, and all these exchanges and things like that start to be standardized, we will see improved security, we will see fewer hacks, um, but for now the technology is so brand new um, that hacks and things of that nature are something that we should expect and really look out for. Um, so make sure you can always, you always keep your cryptocurrency um, private keys to yourself where possible um, and don't keep your cryptocurrency on an exchange um, where possible. And as always, thank you for listening. Um, remember to always hodl for as long as possible.